I was lucky enough to be sent a parcel of goodies from Phoenix Arts Europe and it came in a box. Two of these put together to protect the goodies and sad to say I looked at the box and thought oh that's perfect as opposed to looked at the goodies. Well no I did look at the goodies and I'm experimenting with those but I thought I could mount a painting on this um, and then wax it. It's perfect, it's about 40 centimetres square. So I thought I could show you the process and it's a really nice contemporary way of presenting a painting um, rather than putting it under glass and behind a mat. It's a really simple process. You've just got to be a little bit careful. So I am going to use this pen and wash of the owl and I want to butt it right up on this edge and then I'm going to lose some of that edge, it'll be cropped off. So all you need is your panel. It should be um, sealed if possible, just in case there's any chemicals in the, the wood that will leach into your, your picture over time. Now, if you're going to use something like matte medium, acrylic matte medium, or something, I'm going to use some Mod Podge, um, that will actually seal at the same time. If not, you can use um, a gesso or something like that. This is already painted, so if you want to paint the sides, do it before you put your picture on it. You obviously need your picture. Um, we'll stick it on. It'll be dried overnight under pressure and then trimmed to size and waxed. So, you need to be generous with your glue or the, the matte medium that you're using because, well, for obvious reasons, you want it to stick. Just using a um, applicator, sponge applicator, and I want to be very careful not to get it on the edges. I will go round all the edges afterwards to make sure that I haven't got any on there. You need to pay particular attention to the corners because that is where. The paper tends to not stick and um, obviously where it'll show the worst edges and corners if it doesn't stick bang in the middle no one would ever know but uh, if the corner starts to peel off they certainly will but you don't want to have so much glue on there that when you put your paper on it squidges out the sides so you're going for an even coat generous but not excessive. Taking a bit of kitchen towel, I'm going to go round and make sure that the sides are dry. I mean, if by any chance some does dribble down the side and you don't spot it and get rid of it, you can sand it off at the end, but that's just making a whole pile of work that you could do without, let's be honest. And now take your picture. Now I have actually worked out that I want to line up those two edges and I have excess on the others. If that wasn't the case you could just line it up as you want and then cut off all four edges afterwards but um, I know that I want those to line up so I am just being careful to move that into place this one might need a slight trim and then taking the brayer so posh name for a roller I'm going to start in the middle and this is to make sure you haven't got any air pockets 
make sure it's really sticking in place. Okay, I'm going to check those edges again because I do not need the hassle of cleaning those off. That's looking good. Right, now I'm going to cover it in a piece of clean paper to protect it and then weight it down and dry it overnight and we'll come back tomorrow. So my owl has dried overnight. I put it, I've got a lovely old linen press that you can sort of screw down and apply pressure to so that's all dry. And what we now need to do is trim the sides. I've got to do that really carefully. This side I lined up and it's good. There's a tiny, rather annoying little overlap there. So I've just broken off the end of the blade. So hopefully that is sharp. I won't test it by cutting myself. Um, I'm going to extend it. And basically... run it along the edge now I know you probably didn't see that but that's what I've just cut off and that was easier than I anticipated I think sharp knife firm pressure obviously make sure you're on a cutting mat or something that doesn't matter so I can get really close hmm. I am going to Just do it by running alongside the wood. I think that will get a better finish. And that came off in one. So that's the importance, oh excuse me, <coughs> of the, the really sharp blade. So do go careful that you don't end up cutting your wood. Because I reckon then you'd end up having to sand it down and repaint it and do all that really boring malarkey. Okay, haven't quite managed to cut to the end. I should have overlapped. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, that's quite cool. Um, yeah. Really sad having to cut off a bit of its wing, but that's life. Oh, I'm pleased with that. I, it cut better than I thought. Um, because I thought I was going to have to use a really fine sandpaper and sand off the edges. But feeling it, that's really smooth. Oh, well done me. Hold on, I'm going to zoom out. I don't think that's up high enough. My iPad's on a sort of uh, stand. I'm not sure it can go far enough away. But that should show you quite a lot of it. Before we wax, I've thought of something rather important. I haven't signed it, have I? I actually hate signing my pictures, just in case I spell my name wrong. Stupid, hey? There we go. Because once it's waxed, you wouldn't be able to do it. This is the wax that I plan to use. It's called Dorland's Wax, and it's really lovely. It's made in America. So it can be, well it's not hard to get in the UK, but it's quite expensive. It comes in different size pots, small one, I think that's a four ounce, um, or one that's sort of like a 16 ounce one. Um, so let me read you what it says. It says it's a translucent com compound of waxes and resin. So it's for mixing with oil paints, ink, caustic art etc. It is unparalleled as a sealing medium and protective matte top coat for paintings. For a lustre finish, buff gently once dry. I've read the warnings, it says harmful or fatal if swallowed, wasn't planning on eating it. Um, <laughs> it does suggest ventilation um, because it's got mineral spirits. 
What it doesn't say is that it's got anything nasty and carcinogenic, which is good because I like to put it on with my fingers because I find that really tactile and lovely. Of course, you can um, put it on with a lint-free cloth if you don't like the feel of it. In my experience, how long it takes to dry really depends on how thick you put it on. So I would suggest a very thin coat, but making sure you do cover the entire surface. Let it dry and probably another thin coat. You could go for one thicker coat, but that could be uneven. So that's your decision. And I think a thick coat will take twice as long as a thin coat to, to dry. So you're not saving any time um, there. What I should do is just show you what it looks like. So it's just a white paste. So I take out a squidge. That's a technical term. And it's slightly scary. Just rub it all over the surface. Now you might be a little bit terrified that your paint is going to, to run and move. Well it won't because of course this is watercolour which if this was a water based product might shift it but this is waxes and mineral spirits and therefore it doesn't move that watercolour. So I'm just gently massaging it in and you can feel where it is and when it drags on the surface you need more and I will do the sides as well to protect the sides and ensure that it's fully covered. It is very therapeutic doing this. Oh I should have said make sure your hands are clean but I guess that's fairly obvious. Be particularly careful in corners because they tend to take the most knocks. If you think you put it on a bit thick, I just run my finger across and lift off the excess. So I'm just feeling very carefully whether I've got any over generous areas or any areas I've missed. And then we need to do the same on the sides. I mean you don't have to but I think you want to consist, I like a consistent finish and it'll seal the, the edge of that paper as well and I guess just stop any moisture getting in there. Okie dokie. So that is the waxing process and um, we now need to leave it to dry. And I would have thought probably 24 hours. Now, if you weren't, if you weren't going to buff it and you wanted it totally matte, you just leave it to dry. You might have been a bit more careful with how you put it on at this stage if you're not going to buff it, because buffing will even out any any sort of lumps and bumps. So you could leave it and it would be totally matte. Say I am going to buff it very excited and wish I had one of those magic time turners to to hurry up the drying process. I'll, I'm in the studio at the moment which tends to be quite cold um, so I might take it into the house to encourage some drying. But I am really pleased with the look of that. It's remarkably neat for me. So my wonky donkey has dried overnight the wax has dried and it feels smooth it's not catching on my fingers so you know that wax is dry um, what you'll find if it isn't dry when you go to to buff it it'll drag on your cloth and that's just a sign you've got to leave it longer what I want to try and show you is the difference between buffed and unbuffed so at the moment this is matte and I'm going to shine a torch in the hope this will make show up the difference. So that is matte. And then the owl I showed you, I have already buffed. 
and can you see the difference in the reflection so it's got a nice sheen on it as opposed to the matte surface so all you need is a lint free cloth just an ordinary clean cloth and a bit of elbow grease and I like to use a circular motion and start to buff it up to say if you feel your cloth dragging at all at any point that means that area of wax isn't fully dry and you've just got to be a bit more patient this is not a fast process now Again, not sure how much you will be able to see, but you're starting to get a sheen. It doesn't take a huge amount of effort. Don't forget about doing the sides as well, making sure that those come to a similar standard as well. So I've finished buffing this, and let me see if my torch helps show just a slight shine on it. I move it around in the torchlight. If you either come across a little area that perhaps you haven't that you've managed to miss in your first coat of waxing or if you want a deeper sheen to it you can repeat this process another thin coat of wax dry it overnight at least depending how thick you've put it on buff it up again and you'll get a deeper sheen and um, more even coverage but I've been looking at this and I am pretty sure I haven't missed any areas really looked at it carefully so I'm gonna say enough's enough I am delighted with the look of this it's almost too neat for me I'm not a person who likes perfection but I'm really chuffed with how that's come out I think that this could really confuse people about what medium it is if you saw that hanging on a wall it's not obviously watercolor except of course it is it is obviously watercolor from the painting but from the finish not so I think um, say you were selling waxed watercolors mounted on a cradle board like this you would probably need a certificate of authenticity or something like that um, just to really show this is an original a one-off <coughs> and um, just a different presentation so that's my donkey and that's my owl I have to say I do because when I paint on um, canvas I would have continued the wing down the sides which you just can't do um, so like here you, you can't do on that sort of cradled board so I'm not sure I particularly like that sort of cut off at the edge but that that's a necessity I am really chuffed with how they've turned out and for the fact that I've managed to reuse a box that had some packaging um, brilliant so just need a string on the back and they can hang on the wall